हाँ जी भैया कैसा है मैंने चूज किया वो बहुत ही मीठा निकला आई एम देसी माल देसी आप करवा रहे हैं। एक्स्ट्रा मार्गी उस तरह की। Right in the center, middle of it all, Mark. Oh goodness me! I'm not going to be in the center of attraction. Mark, right in the front. Why is everybody doing that? Can't cut it. So we all all hold it together. What are you going to hold it? Short kill you lost the ball. You're ready? Wait, wait, wait. Sir, sir, come forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anand. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
it's a great pleasure to be here today to be welcoming you all and celebrating the grand opening of summer fun a residential tea addiction center for drugs and alcohol i take this opportunity to welcome the one and only mr mahesh bhat the lovely ms pooja bhat the magnanimous sri narendra balduta ji dignitaries on the dais the highly regarded balduta family and friends samapan advisory board members and the respected doctor community i also welcome members from the aa na community our media friends esteemed partners my corporate colleagues and each member of this august gathering today this may be the formal opening ceremony but the doors of samarpan have been open wide and welcoming for a full year now as a counseling center in mumbai during this time our center has become a valued addition to the society and mental health care system in india today is the culminating event of a series of major actions that have been ongoing as a part of the vision and mission of our group but this is not the end here rather we at samarpan take it our responsibility going forward towards the society this initiative is aimed at addressing the huge untapped potential in addiction rehabilitation services and making it a world class facility we understand that each client rehabilitation journey is unique to their condition and every client at samarpan will receive comprehensive care and support specific to the needs so that they can make a smooth transition from rehabilitation to the everyday life they love we soon going to be a part of the premier global community through upcoming and propose accreditation programs and we look forward to serving those in need of medical rehabilitation sometimes challenges and struggles are exactly what we need in our lives may you welcome every effort every struggle and every challenge may you open your wings and fly may samarpan bring you back to life and beyond thank you so much Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, the summer fun initiative. That's going to take a long time to describe. Uh, but can you guys hear me? Yeah. Louder. Louder. Okay. Um. So first and foremost, let me just thank you guys for coming out here on a Sunday. I know that would be a painstaking ordeal for me to do on any Sunday. So for all of you guys who made it here to support us on this day, thank you. A little bit about me. Um, as Gayatri said earlier, I'm a physician. Yeah. I'm a therapist. I've worn many, many hats in my life. Uh, and for the last 20 odd years or so, I've been working in the field of substance abuse and addiction. Uh, I went to med school in Bombay. I went to Naya Hospital. Finished up with that. Went abroad and got my master's in therapy. And people ask me, "What do you specialize in?" And uh, happened to specialize in something they call treatment of co-occurring disorders. which is when people have both an addiction and a mental health issue and that sort of becomes a theme in my life and you know, i seem to live by this motto over how do you make life more complicated than it needs to be as you will see in the next 5 minutes so i decided to work with this population and then for the next i think 7 8 10 years i was living in the us working in residential treatment uh, involved in outpatient treatment residential treatment advocacy fundraising all that wonderful stuff um and when i abruptly i decided to come back to india in 2010 to make my life more complicated than it needs to be um, and then when i came back i i was gone for a decade right the decade in which there was ma massive transformation in india the 2000s i was gone and i came back here and i set up private practice and the changes were astonishing uh, in many many levels but if we just speak about the explosion of substance use you know i i started seeing stuff that i'd never seen before in the 90s you saw kids who were younger and younger using substances and getting addicted you saw women getting more and more issues we saw older adults we saw a wide variety of substances i'd never heard of uh, on the streets of bombay and all over town and it was it was very very difficult to see there always going to be an x amount of people who on outpatient basis will become good but equally for people in which the disease of substance abuse is progressed long enough 
without a residential treatment stay, it becomes impossible. So I found myself working in private practice, getting increasingly frustrated that you do X amount of progress and you're just not getting to the point that you need to get to sustain people in recovery. And so this idea, and then over those years, the treatment industry in India was getting up to power, we weren't there yet, I was ending up sending a lot of people abroad. And, and this combination of stuff was really, really getting to me, you know. And along the five or six years ago, I met the Baldota family. And I think there was a resonance right there because here was a bunch of people, very, very successful conglomerate, who had a very big passion for CSR. Right? And they seemed to share this idea that we, the, 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 the thinking that evolved is, why should anybody from India have to go abroad for treatment? You know, as far as medical care goes, in the last 20 years, we've come to the point that people all over the world come here. Right? Why are we thinking small? Why are we not doing something on a scale? Uh, and that's how the idea was born. Um, and then life got busy and they got busy and I got busy and... And then in the middle of the pandemic, you know, again to make life more difficult than it needs to be, at the start of the pandemic we decided this is a good time to start a rehab. Right? Uh, and so we started talks in 2020 and then we started our outpatient center last year. And it's been extremely rewarding. Um, so what is it that we do? You know, what, what, so the, the big misconception that a lot of people don't understand is that addiction is not bad behavior, addiction is not a moral failure, addiction is a biological disease. Right? And as, as, un, unless we start acknowledging that and treating it as a medical condition, we are going to make peripheral changes around the edges. Uh, once you understand that, what, what you realize, a lot of people who have got addiction for over 8 or 10 years are not getting high anymore because they enjoy it. They are getting high because they don't want to feel terrible when they stop. Right? Uh, and so quite often if a person has got a long-standing addiction for 10 years, 12 years, there is no way he is going to be able to sit at home and say, I'll say sabband. I wish it does happen that way. I mean, I could pack my bag and move to Hawaii and live somewhere if that happened that way. But it does not happen that way. There is going to be a bunch of people, no matter what you try to do on our patient basis, are going to require residential treatment. When they are away from the triggers and they are away from the stresses in which they can heal and recover. So we started conceptualizing a program, you know, which has three components. A pre-treatment phase, which is going to be in Mumbai, the rehabilitation phase, which I am so happy to see so many people here today, and then the aftercare phase. And the whole pre-treatment phase is based on the idea, again, very rare that somebody with an alcohol problem, with a drug problem is going to knock on your clinic and say, I want to stop. Right? 90% of the time there is a family member, a loved one who is from you. And then we use evidence-based treatments called motivational enhancement therapy in which you help the family how to engage the person and how to bring the person on board on the treatment. A certain percentage of those will get, actually get well outpatient. But definitely you will need a certain component of them will be rehab. And that program when Martin comes up to speak, he will walk you through what we plan to do over here. The last component, which again will happen in Mumbai or online, is aftercare. Which is the make and break, you know, for 30 days if a person goes away and is not tempted by alcohol, that's fine. But when you re-enter life, and in fact Rahul was talking about rebuilding life, rebuilding families, right? And the program has to be family-centered. We are, we are Indians, you know, at the end of the day, family is where everything begins and family is where everything ends. There's no point saying, I am so what today, but I don't speak to my father anymore. That's ridiculous. Right? So there is going to be this whole program both in pre-treatment, pre rehabilitation and outpatient that has individual counselling, group counselling as well as family therapy. Supported by psychiatric care, I specialize in poor occurring disorders. 50% of people approximately, depending on what study you look at, will have a coexisting anxiety, depression, bipolar condition. Right? And unless that is addressed, the chances of staying sober long term plummet. So over the last couple of years, we spent a lot of time, I think, building, finding the right people. Uh, and I'm really, really grateful that we, I think in, in Dr. Ashish and Shweta and the, and the entire team that we built here, Martin has come down from the UK and Thailand. I think we got the right combination of the Baldota family backing us with the vision, a treatment team that is committed to this cause, and a clinically proven program which Martin will walk you through and I think those three ingredients coming together 
uh, with the blessings and the well wishes of all people here. I think those elements coming together really give us a shot to, set, to, come to, to create something of value that hopefully will last all of outlast all of us in this room. Thank you. He was on the journey of an addict. Well, uh, the dawn of new hope in addiction treatment, summer fun. There is a line of a great French existential writer my friend Bhushan to remind me yesterday that it was in the harshest winter that I discovered that there was an invincible summer within me. It was in despair, in the dark night of despair, that the first ray of light descended on me. Call it grace, call it miracle. Having hit the rock bottom, having been very successful, having had back-to-back -back hits and being talked about as the new Zapa terrible of the film industry who is going to steer the film industry into sparkling new spaces. I discovered that nothing fails like success. Having touched the peak of the first mountain of your personal goal, I discovered that there was annoying emptiness. As John Steinberg said that there was, you're well fed but you're still hungry. You're warm but you still shiver. You're loved but you still look for love with a begging bowl outside. Something was missing and that made me hit the bottom. Now I have from the struggling young boy who had barely means to keep the wolf away from the door with a little girl like Pooja, my, my first wife. I had become a very successful man and I had the means to destroy myself. I had the means and I had the applause in the auditorium. Even when I got drunk and I behaved obnoxiously, people put up with me because I was a money generating machine. So nothing failed by success. But then one day, when my daughter, second daughter, Shaheen was born, I came home drunk, having celebrated. And when I carried my child in my arm, I just felt that she turned her face away from me out of revulsion because my mouth stank. That's what I believed. That was my... And that was a moment of grace. After that, it's 34 years I've not touched a drop of alcohol. And then I set off on a journey. Cold turkey, I did not go to AA. I didn't go to a doctor. I felt that the powers that birthed me must have gifted me with everything that I had is there within me. I don't need to reach out. But that doesn't mean that somebody else should not. I do not want to put myself as a model and say that emulate me. But I walk this path alone. And then I birthed a film called Daddy, in which my darling Pooja made her foray at the age of 17, 16, 17, 17. And then we were sh began shooting for daddy and I had given up drinking and I proclaimed to the world that I had given up drinking. And while we were shooting for daddy, one night after the, my actors had gone, I used to give them drinks and not drink myself because the sight of people drinking was still very comforting. And Pooja, the 17 year old girl, having memorized her lines and rehearsed with her father for the next day, Went to sleep, my wife was away, and I had a lunch to the world that I'd given her brain key. And while I was putting the bottles away, I said to myself, nobody will know if I take a drink or two. I'm stressed out. Why not have a drink or two? The moment I said that, a voice within me erupted and said, 
You can lie to the world, you can lie to your little girl who's there. But how will you lie to yourself? And that was the day I was scorched from inside. And then I discovered what the great sage of India, Buddha, said. Be a light unto yourself. Swayam Pramana, Swayam Prakasha. It's only when it burns inside of you, you can bring the best of bottles of alcohol. I wouldn't touch it. But still today I have nightmares that I've hit the bottle again and I've turned everything that I've done to ashes. But the irony that Puja will talk about is that the child who fears frees the fictitious daddy, the ruby daddy of his alcohol addiction, years later herself became an alcoholic. That's another story. So that's the fictitious life which we weave on the screen and give you a happy ending. But then there is real life. And real life is hard, bitter, unforgiving. And at every curve of your life, you must remind yourself that if an alcoholic like me, I'm 34 years sober, if I touch a glass of beer now, I will be back where I started. I'm delighted to see a quantum leap like this being taken here. It's a quantum leap. And I met Martin came with Rahul to my house. I discovered that things are changing. Something has been fast tracked in the last two years. In the, in the pan but there is a pandemic of despair. And I wonder, Martin, I wonder, how are we going to deal with this growing despair that is there in people? There's a war out there in Ukraine. The world leaders have come down on their knees. Everything is in shambles. Our belief systems are scrambled. Our stories are not working. The WhatsApp is firing messages wither away like the morning dew drop. How the hell are you going to save that individual who's biologically predisposed towards something? As doctor said, that he is not a depraved human being. He is not an inferior human being. He is one of us. He can't deal with the despair. And so he takes to substance abuse, his self-medication. And will you have the compassion to look at him with that eye? Will you educate the world around him, yourself? To look at him with a different eye? That these are the questions that you do not all of us. But here in, out, out, in the outskirts of Pune, when you start a, a thing like this, it's an oasis in a desert. And I only wish you the best and I hope that you, you grow and you grow. But the truth is that truth does not require PR machinery. It's like fire. It spreads on its own. Why did Rahul seek me and puja out. Not because we are celebrities who tantalize you with our movies for some time. It's because we have suffered and climbed this mountain of sobriety. Aware that any time we could fall down and be back to ground zero. So it's what we have lived. So great things come out of human suffering. Great things. The entire culture is born out of the womb of suffering. It is suffering that gives birth to great movements. As they say that when a grain of sand gets into an oyster, the oyster, in order to escape from that pain, turns it into a pearl. Its intention is not to make the pearl, but to escape from the pain. So I see Samarpan comes out of your pain. It comes out of their pain. It's a beautiful pearl. It's for the world to marvel at. But it was born in suffering. It was born in the dark night of despair. So the answers will come from despair, not from bogus hopes, not from sound bites, which are whipped up by politicians on the hour by the hour. In, in you know, they insulate you from the reality. But confronting the hard, hard reality you may perhaps have a chance.
to usher in a new dawn. I congratulate you all for doing this. May you have more power to create more such oases all around the country. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. but dignitaries of the dais, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to warmly welcome you to the inauguration of Samarpan, the de addiction center for drugs and alcohol. Firstly, I would like to start off by commending Shreni very and the entire team of Samarpan for making this happen. This would not have been happen, but for the, their vision, passion and determination. Their drive, their drive reminds me of my father, late Sri Abhiraj Bhargota, who instilled in us the culture of giving back to the society. He founded the Bhargota group of companies in 1961 with starting the small mines. Following this, following his trip states, we have lived up this journey of growing from a small mining company to a diversified business group with interest across mining, pellet making, wind energy, industrial gases, shipping, aviation and environmental system. This would not have been possible if we had not stayed true to the value of integrity and goodwill. Even though practicing it has come at a cost such as when we were refused, when we were refused to engage our when such as when we refused to engage in corrupt practices, our minds were shut down for years. We still chose to remain honest and fought to the best of our abilities and overcome it. This time very hard, but we stood by the truth of the company and continued to support our employees, society and engaged in CSR activities. We move towards sustainable mining and automation to ensure the very beings and safety of our employees and the future generation. Our CSR initiatives have been in various fields in healthcare. We have contributed to Baldota Institute of Digestive Sciences, Abiraj Baldota Cancer Detection Center in Mumbai, Mobile Endoscopy for Maharashtra, and Blood Bank in Hospital. As a part of our sustainable mining initiative, we have planted 19,80,000 trees. We have developed, we have trained, we have trained 4,25,000 girls for self-defense as a part of their initiative. We have adopted 19 villages and run self-help groups in them amongst our other activities. However, one thing common in all these has been the focus of we need best work. All our initiatives emerge from the need for something. Hence, we saw a close family member struggle with addiction. We realized the need for good de-addiction center in India. We were fortunate to get help abroad, but not everybody can have. There are many people in India who are looking for high quality support to beat an addiction. Hence, Samarpan emerged. We hope that this de-addiction center of international standard 
will play a role in bettering the life of those dealing with addiction and their loved ones. We aspire to start many more such centers throughout India. Lastly, I would like to thank the chief guest for taking time out to be here and thank you all for supporting and believing me in our cause. Thank you. Thank you, Gayatri. And uh, thank you for that very generous introduction. Uh, you know me as a filmmaker, an actor, a filmmaker. But I think that uh, mic is off. Yeah, you can hear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I think uh, now, is that better? Yeah, yeah. So my introduction always says uh, Pooja Bhatt, actor, filmmaker, activist. But I would like to put right on top there Pooja Bhatt, recovering alcoholic addict. <laughs> Let me begin to hi, I'm Pooja Bhatt. I'm an alcoholic. I've been sober for five years and three months, and I'm damn proud of that. Like my father said, it is a tough act to follow. 34 years sober, wow. I'm still in my infancy in more ways than one. But yes, my introduction came from a film called Daddy. And uh, I was happy when we were, before we came on the diet, we were talking about it. I'm glad that it still touches people so many years later. Because I think it was based on truth. Like my father explained how the climax was rewritten because of what he lived. The irony was that I played a character, a girl who means her father of alcoholic, of alcohol and I found myself at the age of 46. I was 17 when I did Daddy, I found myself in the same position and I was the alcoholic and I needed to be weaned of alcohol. I was aware that as a child of an alcoholic I was four times more susceptible to becoming one myself. I have a eclectic mix of friends, some are teetotalers, some are addicts, some are junkies. It's, it's an interesting combination. But I always thought that, you know, this is not going to happen to me. I drank, drank how I lived openly and copiously and um, I just thought that I'm, in, I'm on top of things. I'm in, I'm in charge of my uh, drinking issue. I'm not, I'm not that addict that other people are. And the intervention came at a point in my life where I wasn't really looking for one, perhaps. And uh, my father never asked me to stop drinking. He always believed that uh, who is he to tell me or to preach to me what to do when he's done something himself. So people asked him to kind of some way influence me to kind of get a hold of my drinking. And we were having a conversation on the phone via SMS and he signed off with saying, I love you, kid. And I said, I love you too, Pops. And I added, I said, actually, you're the only thing in my universe that's truly worth loving. And the line that came after that changed my life. Because it was not the word, it was what I read in them. And it said, if you love me, then love yourself. Because I live in you. And I'm sorry I'm getting emotional as always, because that's again a problem that I'm born with. But it was those, it was the spaces in between those words when I realized that if he lives in me, I have to be the best me. And how do I become the best me? By stopping the drink. What did I do that night? I went out and drank three fourths of a bottle of Lafroig. Came home at 5.30 in the morning, tweeted perfectly. Nobody could tell whether I was falling asleep or waking up. I was a functional alcoholic. An absolutely functional alcoholic. I could drink. I had the privilege of being invited to a Navy event and I sat there, looked at a room full of sailors, cadets to the highest brass and I could say, you know what, I could drink all you sailors under the table and I really could. <laughs> he hasn't had that privilege. And I went to work and I made movies and like he said, I was functional, I was paying the bills, I was supporting a husband, I was supporting a whole army of people and nobody questioned me. But that night I decided to put my phone on silent, it was Christmas Eve and I sat with myself. And I heard silent at night wafting in from the church next door. Sat with my four cats. I woke up on Christmas Day a day. I always associated with revelry and champagne and wine. 
And I felt like I had conquered Mount Everest. Just being sober that one day. And then one day became two days, it became three days, and I just felt that my feet were getting stronger. I felt like I loved myself more. But then I realized that it was more difficult for me to stay sober in that sense, and I had to make more excuses for not drinking than I ever had to make for drinking. We live in times where social events, work meetings, weddings, anniversaries, you celebrate something, you pop a bottle of champagne. You want miserable, you have a drink to relax. And I was an awful reminder to a lot of people that they had a problem that they were, not, they were unwilling to address. So yes, I had the privilege of a father at home who set it off with me, allowed me to accept the grace by that one line that he sent me, but I also had relatives, I also had a parent who resented me for acknowledging that, acknowledging that I had a problem. Because that was a reminder that they had a problem themselves and didn't want to face up to it. So you want to find out who your best friends are, get sober. <laughs> you know. Another time when I had people telling me, if you love me, you'll have a drink. It's my anniversary, have a drink. Come on, I just had a baby, have a drink. Come on, you can crack it. You've been sober for six months, have a drink. I called up a place called Deepak Wines one day. I was one of their best customers. It's in Pali Hill, by the way, for anyone who doesn't have an alcohol problem, call it. And a friend of mine had come over, and I don't keep alcohol, but I'm happy to serve it to you. And I called them, and the guy picked up the phone, and I said, hello. He said, ha, ma'am. So I said, ha, red wine hai. So he said, kis ko chahiye? So I said, my friend is coming, red wine hai. I didn't drink it, I left it in the shop. And he said, yes, I had read in the paper that you left it. And when your phone came, I heard your voice. So my heart was hurt. And I was so moved that I was so moved by that. So I said, the kindness of strangers, a man whose livelihood depends on selling me alcohol, and I was one of his best customers, but he didn't want me to stop drinking. And they were my very own who wished that I would fall, wished that I would stumble, wished that I would kind of just take that drink so they could say, see, we knew it wouldn't last forever. But I think what I did, and I was born again with that affliction, but I was born with that switch where I said no and then I, I stayed on course. I made the world my AA class. I felt, and I often asked him, I said, if daddy was made from the female perspective, would society give a woman the opportunity or the privilege of leaving her child home because she is an alcoholic and coming back after 17 years to claim her, her baby, society would not give us that opportunity. So I think that women drink in private and we don't dare acknowledge our flaws because even alcoholics are a man's jagir. Hai. Recovery is a male privilege. Talking about your weaknesses, your scars, your frailties is a male privilege in India. And I thought that I owed it to people to tell them that, you know what, if this could happen to me, it's going to happen to you. But if I could recover, you can too. And I just felt that we need to end the stigma. The pandemic was devastating for all of us. Uh, suicide, mental health, addiction was on a peak. And yet we lived in a country and a government that criminalized addicts criminalized any sort of addictive behavior, took the discourse on mental health back into the boondocks with Sushant Singh Rajput's suicide. The unfortunate tragic event that happened became into a media fracas and circus and took the whole discourse on mental health and, Ill and addiction back into the dark ages. And I think that a society that does not acknowledge that unfortunately when a society is broken, the reason that Governments can't win the war on drugs, it's because drugs work. That bottle of alcohol would give me more respite than my broken marriage, than all the men I had met, or the career highs or lows. The truth is that the alcohol delivered, people did not, society did not. So I blotted myself out in it. So I just feel that we need to be able to share each other's strategies more, to be able to celebrate them. I'm often told on Twitter, what do you know you're an alcoholic? And I'm like a recovering alcoholic and proud of it. And I choose to belong to those people, I do people who hold my frailties to light. When you talk about the dawn of new hope, I am not the darkness I have endured. I am the light that I refuse to surrender. I am happy to 
be part of this. It's honored to be able to come and light, add my little light, my little spark to this new dawn because I feel that addiction is not a moral weakness. It's not, you're not a criminal if you're an addict. Why should rehabilitation and why should, you know, weaning off alcohol or any substance seem like a prison sentence? So I think when you have a facility like this, a center like this, it's so beautiful to be able to deal with nature. It brings dignity back to that process of healing. And don't we just want that? Is human dignity. When we are most frail, when we are most broken. To have somebody look at us as human and see why does it hurt so much? Not why do you think. Where does it hurt? Can I take that pain away? And I think this space allows that. So I think that I'm just really glad this is happening, you know, and I just think that we owe each other, we owe each other, we owe each other more such facilities. I hope you'll grow from this. I hope this is not only one center. And uh, I just feel end the stigma, talk more, share more, air your grief, internal bleeding is far more dangerous, you know, and you just need to be able to bleed. You need to be able to kind of share because there's one person out there who can look at your journey and say that you know what if she could do it i can do it and i think it's a life worth living too so thank you so we want to not to rent the darkness and to just be this blaze and healing and sharing and recovering and touching more lives to be able to pass that message on so thank you Thank you so much, Ms. Bhatt. Your journey has been a ray of light for my name. Thank you for your honest and motivating. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests of honour, thank you for taking the time today to visit our wonderful centre. Um, I feel very privileged to be here today and to follow the inspiring speeches um, about Samapan's journey as well as our distinguished guests' own personal journeys. It's a little bit daunting following that, so uh, I would, uh, please bear with me. Um, I'm probably not going to be as inspiring. Firstly, I'd like to say that addiction does not discriminate. It's a disease that has significant impacts upon our societies across the world and there may be differences in what people may use from bankers in London with cocaine and champagne to the farmer in Thailand with his rice wine and yabba but the consequences of it are all too real for many of us. From a personal perspective I've seen friends and family suffer from the ravages of addiction and have seen the destruction and sadness that it brings to those families and loved ones who are often unable, despite their best efforts, wishes and interventions, to change that path. Personally, I lost my stepfather to alcoholism around about three years ago. To see a previously smart, intelligent and respected man who held senior positions in the British Civil Service as a JP uh, and basically a well-recognized community person slide into alcoholism and become a shadow of the person that he had been was a tragedy. The emptiness and sadness that he left behind will never be forgotten by the family and friends of him. And despite all those offers of help, support, interventions, and even me being a substance abuse therapist, we really couldn't do anything about it. Um, so, whilst I don't pretend to know everyone's experience, I certainly do empathise with people that will come into treatment, their families, and about the importance of working with the family as well as the addict that does come in. We as a society lose far too many people through alcohol and drugs. It was mentioned a little bit earlier as well around about governments and on the whole, my own belief is that governments do 
very little to address in the grander scheme of things. Preferring to continue with the failed war on drugs, punitive approaches, criminalisation that really serve no purpose other than to look tough and maybe to appeal to some base voters. As an example, alcohol which is legal and probably the most familiar substance that people come into contact with and is widely prevalent in Indian society results in widespread losses in forms of physical, physical health outcomes such as cirrhosis of the liver, heart disease, diabetes, as well as absenteeism, road traffic accidents and various behavioural and mental health outcomes. The same is to be said also for illicit drug use as well. The WHO recognised in 2005, and I'm sorry that I haven't got the exact figures of what they are now, um, I'm sure they probably will be increasing given the pandemic, but 3.2% of the world's deaths are alcohol related. So let that sink in. That's a significant amount of people every year. In 2005, estimated numbers of people using alcohol in India were 62.5 million. 17.4% having an of that having an alcohol use disorder. That's around about 10.6 million people. And that of all hospital admissions in India, 20 between 20 to 30 percent are alcohol related. 40% of road traffic accidents occur under the influence of alcohol and between 10 to 15% of people with alcohol related problems commit suicide. This should alone give an indication of the impact of alcohol. We know from years of research and data collection that drug and alcohol use has a major impact on all of us in society. <clears throat> These figures are a little bit more up to date and not necessarily around alcohol, but this is a US figure. 8.7% of 8th graders have used illicit drugs in the last month. 21.3% of 8th graders have tried illicit drugs at least once. By the time they're in 12th grade, 46.6% of teens have tried illicit drugs. However, not all of these people will develop an unhealthy relationship with alcohol or drugs or develop a substance use disorder. But for those that do, then services that are available are imperative. Having spent the last 15 years of my life working in the addiction field with a large part, large part of that setting up treatment services in Thailand, it has been clear that the need for world-class inpatient treatment in India has been needed. Certainly been mentioned earlier, and it always surprised me that given the size of India, and also the massive amount of talented medical professionals, psychologists, therapists, that there wasn't really too big a field for rehabilitation in India. Many people traveling to Thailand or to the UK or the US for treatment. Thailand as an individual, an international rehab destination grew from one international rehab in 2008 that had 12 beds to over 20 programs of sorts by 2020. That 10 bed centre that I was involved in setting up eventually had 72 beds across three sites. All of these centres had regular Indian clients who would travel overseas. So I hope that Samarpan now being in India, and although maybe it is a little bit outside of the cities, people will be willing to travel to here. I believe actually this is a perfect environment. For Samarpan, our focus will initially become very much on the Indian domestic market and helping our local communities and I'm sure that once travel becomes more free again post-pandemic 
we can expect to start welcoming clients from across the globe. Certainly believe that we will see non-resident Indians coming from places such as the UK as well to, to India. As Dr. Azar said, I was going to walk you through the, the program. I'm going to try and keep it brief. But the key components in de developing a world-class program is the need for evidence-based treatment with a combination of established therapeutic interventions such as 12-step facilitation, cognitive behaviour therapy and family therapy. Um, certainly um, for India, the family is such an important factor and from my experience, we often do a disservice to clients when they come in. We spend a month working with the client we get them to a much better place, but we don't actually help the family. We don't spend enough time with the family. We don't educate the family. And then we send that client back home and we expect for a different result. And nothing is actually resolved within the family. And therefore, what happens is that that client likely relapses or there's further issues. So I really think this is going to be an important part of our program. It's something that we spoke about right from the outset with, with my colleagues, um, Dr. Ashish, Dr. Azar, uh, and Dr. Rahul. Um, many morning online meetings as I was in the UK over the last year um, discussing about how important that would be. In terms of our clients, all of our clients will undergo 20 hours of group therapy and look forward to setting people on a journey of recovery. It's once again a privilege to be, be here today, part of this wonderful progress program, as well as having the opportunity to be here in India. And I look forward to welcoming our first clients next Sunday, and of course meeting many people today. And should anyone have any questions, then please come and speak to me, I'll be happy to, to talk, um, I am easily approachable um, and i just like once again to thank everyone here um, that has spoken uh, and also a special thanks to uh, Mr. Schrenick as well for um, giving me this opportunity to lead this programme. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yes.
मुझे एक इंटरमेंशन की जरूरत है लोग जिंदगी बिता देते हैं और डिनाइल में रहते हैं और अपने आप को एडमिट ही नहीं करते हैं कि शायद हमारी डिपेंडेंस जो है प्ले कर रही है सिर्फ ना सिर्फ हमारी खुद की जिंदगी में मगर अपने सराउंडिंग्स और फैमिली की जिंदगी में भी एंड आई थिंक ये हम एक सोसाइटी में रहते हैं एक हिंदुस्तानी एक आदत है कि बाहर जाके चीज़ ना बोले जो घर में होता है दर्द जो है ये चीज़ को कापिट के नीचे आप छुपा दे सच ना बोले बाहर झूठ बोलो दुनिया को अपने आप को भी झूठ बोलो लड़की की अगर शादी टूट जाती है अगर उसका पति उसको पीटता है नाइन्टी परसेंट का टाइम लोग बोलते हैं कि सह लो आपकी तो किस्मत है ये क्योंकि लोग क्या कहेंगे तो औरतें जो हैं वो छुप के पीते हैं तो रिकवरी कैसे खुल कर करेंगे तो मुझे लगा कि जब मैंने ये अपने आप को कह दिया पहले कि हाँ आई हैव अ प्रॉब्लम एंड लाइक आई सेड कि हाँ मेरे घर में महेश भट्ट हैं जो बहुत ही सपोर्टिव हैं उन्होंने खुद उस जर्नी द जर्नी ऑफ फायर द पाथ ऑफ फायर ही इज़ वॉकड ऑन मगर मेरे खुद के घर में वैसे भी लोग हैं जो डिनाइल में आज भी हैं अपने खुद के एडिक्शन के बारे में तो जैसे स्टार्ट साउंड और कट के बीच में वो शायद जितने भी अच्छे डायरेक्टर हों आपको खुद शॉट देनी पड़ती है ना एडिक्शन में लोग आपको एक पाथ पर लेके जा सकते हैं बट यू हैव टू वॉक दैट पाथ ऑन योर ओन I have to endure every day alone. And COVID pandemic, उसके बीच में जब भी एक वायरस को हमें एक साथ लाना चाहिए था हिंदुस्तानी लोगों की ये खासियत है कि उसी टाइम पर एक दूसरे को मारो पीटो दलील करो मेंटल हेल्थ डिप्रेशन सुसाइड एडिक्शन आई थिंक मीडिया ने बहुत ज्यादती की है हिंदुस्तान के साथ में हमारे नौजवान के साथ में जब सुशांत सिंह राजपूत की ट्रैजिक डेथ हुई थी मेंटल हेल्थ का जो डिस्कोर्स था एडिक्शन का जो डिस्कोर्स था बहुत लोगों ने उसे एक्सप्लॉयट करके देव टेक इन द इशू इन टू द डार्क एज जिसके लोग डर गए थे कि हम हेल्प कैसे मांगेंगे हमको क्रिमिनलाइज किया जाएगा सो आई थिंक दैट इट इज़ प्लेस लाइक दिस वे यू गेट होप एंड यू रियलाइज कि एक तो जैसे डॉक्टर ने कहा कि एडिक्शन जो है चाहे आप शराबी हो या यू हैव अ सब्सटेंस अब्यूज प्रॉब्लम वो एक मॉरल फेलियर नहीं है आप क्रिमिनल नहीं हो वो एक बायोलॉजिकल एक इलनेस है एंड ये शेम का जो कल्चर है ना कि आप यू दिस शट पीपल आउट यू शेम देम इन टू साइलेंस ये शेम शब्द आप निकाल दें तो बेहतर होगा फिर एक साथ कहीं पहुँचेंगे एज ए सोसाइटी सो लोग मुझे बहुत आपको क्या आता है आप कैसे बोल सकते आप तो एक एल्कोहलिक है तो मैं कहती हूँ रिकवरिंग एल्कोहलिक एंड आई एम वेरी प्राउड ऑफ इट आप छुपाएं अपने दर्द को आप दुनिया को कुछ और दिखाएं और जिंदगी कुछ और जिए मैं ऐसी जिंदगी नहीं जीने 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 वाली हूँ जैसे भट्ट ने मुझे बहुत पहले कहा था कि हम वो होते हैं जो हम छुपाते हैं तो मैंने दुनिया को अपना एक एल्कोहलिक सनोनमस क्लास बना दिया क्योंकि मुझे लगा कि ये बहुत ज़रूरी था लोगों को कहना जो मेरे फैंस हैं जो लोग मुझे चाहते हैं खासतौर के औरतों को कि अगर ये मेरे साथ हो सकता था तो आपके साथ भी हो सकता है और अगर मैं रिकवर कर सकती थी आज मैं पाँच साल सोबर हूँ तो आप भी कर सकते हैं आप भी छोड़ सकते हैं क्योंकि मैं खुलकर शराब पीती थी तो मैंने बोला कि मैं छुप के फिर रिकवर क्यों करूँ आप क्यों मुझे बोलेंगे कि आप छुप के रिकवर करो शेम क्या है इसमें तो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू बी अशेम्ड ऑफ माई अफ्लिक्शन ऑफ माई फ्रेल्टीज मेरी फ्रेल्टीज मेरे स्ट्रेंथ है मैं अपने स्कार्स को खुल खुले आम पहन के गहने की तरह पहन के घूमूंगी सर उठा के घूमूंगी एंड आई होप मोर पीपल डू द सेम इट्स अ जेनेटिक फ्लॉ बट लाइक आई सेड के वी कैन लुक आउट ऑफ द सेम विंडो बट वी डोंट सी द सेम सेम व्यू आई थिंक के जिस बिकॉज आप एक घर में पैदा हुए हैं आपके माँ बाप ये हैं उसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि आप सारे ट्रेट्स आप यू नो इनहेरिट करते हैं तो नेपोटिज्म के बारे में बात करते हैं क्योंकि आपका आपके पिताजी एक फिल्म मेकर है या एक कलाकार है तो मतलब ये नहीं है कि वो टैलेंट या ऑनेस्टी की जीन आपके अंदर भी पैदा होगी डॉक्टर साहब समबडी लाइक यू नो भट्ट साहब 
जब इस तरह की शख्सियत आती है और आपके इनिशिएटिव को सपोर्ट करती है यू हाफ द बैटल यू वॉन्ट करेज बट सर आपसे जानना चाहूँगा मतलब मेरी लाइटर नोट और मैं चाहूँगा मैं जो पूछना चाह रहा हूँ वही बात आप तक पहुँचे जब मैं हिंदी फिल्म इंडस्ट्री की बात करता हूँ तो पूजा ने भी कई बार जिक्र किया सुशांत का और उसका जिस तरह से तमाशा बनाया गया सबको पता लेकिन इंडस्ट्री एक ऐसी जगह है जहाँ हर दूसरा आदमी डिप्रेशन में है फिल्म में नहीं मिली काम छूट गया इतने दिन से स्ट्रगल चालू है ऑडिशन के लिए जा रहा है और यू नो फोर्थ फिल्म लेकर घूम रहा है और जब और कुछ लोग ऐसे हैं जैसे पूजा ने ये भी कहा कि बहुत से लोग ऐसे हैं जिन्हें पता है ये परेशानी है लेकिन बोलना नहीं है और मैं ऐसा मानता हूँ जब मैं एडिट सोसाइटी की बात करता हूँ शायद ये सबसे माकूल जगह रहेगी वो आए और क्योंकि एक एक लाइफ स्टाइल जीते हैं आप इस बारे में आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे कि आई फील समय समर्पण कहीं ना कहीं वो बहुत इंटेलेक्चुअल क्लास के लिए भी आई डोंट नो हाउ करेक्ट आई एम नहीं मेरे ख्याल में समर्पण एक सोच है एक व्यक्ति के दर से इसका विस्फोट हुआ है इसलिए कहता हूँ कि दर्द की कोख से ही हर बड़ी बात का जन्म होता है और उसमें ऊर्जा इतनी है कि ये सोच अगर आज हम यहाँ इकट्ठे हुए हैं और हम मुंबई से आए हैं संडे को तो इसलिए आए क्योंकि हमको लगता है कि ये जो दिशा जो है ये सही दिशा इन्होंने पकड़ी है जहाँ पर ये चलकर एक एग्जांपल बनना चाहते हैं कि रिकवरी जो है वो एक मल्टीफेस एक प्रोग्राम के जरिए ही आप अपने आप को वापस जिंदगी से जोड़ पाएंगे अब ये कहना कि ये क्योंकि ये एक तबके के लिए ही ये फैसिलिटी अवेलेबल है ये सच्चाई तो है मगर क्या वो वहीं तक सीमित हो रहेगी मेरे ख्याल में नहीं अगर इनका आप इतिहास उठा के देखें तो ये बात इनकी शुरू हुई यहाँ से इनकी बात शुरू हुई यहाँ से मगर देखिए अच्छी बात जो होती है वो फिर आग की तरह फैलती है यही लोग हैं जो आगे चल के इसको बहुत ही रीजनेबल पैकेजेस में और लोगों के लिए भी अवेलेबल ये पूरी जो ये पूरा जो पूरा जो स्ट्रक्चर इन्होंने पैदा किया है मार्टिन साहब की मैंने जब तकरीर सुनी तो मैं तो जॉक किया कि ये आपके दिल में सिर्फ प्रेम से आप समाज की समस्या नहीं हल कर सकते ज्ञान की आवश्यकता है क्योंकि अगर आपका बच्चा बीमार होता है बच्चे से प्यार तो बहुत करते हैं मगर इलाज तो डॉक्टर ही करेगा ना जिसके पास ज्ञान होता है तो एक शिद्दत हमारे दिल में है हमारे अंदर एक जज्बा है मगर जब वो राहुल वाजपेयी हैं मार्टिन साहब हैं बाकी जो डॉक्टर साहब हैं उनकी सपोर्ट से ये जब ये एक मूवमेंट आप यहाँ पर जन्म देंगे तो ये इसकी जो इसकी नकल करने वाले लोग भी पैदा हो जाएंगे हर अच्छे काम की मी टूरिज़म शुरू हो जाती है तो समाज को फ़ायदा ही होगा इससे और मगर सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट बात यह है कि ये एक जहनी या मॉरल फेलियर नहीं है ये जिस्मानी बीमारी है और जिस तरह आप डायबिटीज़ को ट्रीट करते हैं जिस तरह आप अस्थमा को ट्रीट करते हैं उसी तरह से आपको एक एडिक्ट को देखना चाहिए उसको अगर आप उस नज़र से देखेंगे और वो छुप के छुपाते हुए अपनी जिंदगी गुजारेगा तो ये हार इक्कीसवीं सदी के दूसरे डेकेड में जब दुनिया में विश्व में अभी आप उस कगार का आ गए हैं जहाँ पर एक न्यूक्लियर हॉलकास्ट की संभावना है तो एक पैंडेमिक का डिस और डिस्पेयर उसमें सब्सटेंस अब्यूज की तरफ आदमी झुकेगा तो ये छोटे मोटे जो आपको लगते हैं काम ये बहुत बड़े काम हैं जैसे पहाड़ पर कहीं पर आग लगती है तो दूर से नजर आता है कि आग लग रही तो ये शायद समर्पण वो काम करेगा कि कहीं पर उम्मीद है कुछ लोग इकट्ठा होकर उन्होंने एक प्रोग्राम को जन्म दिया है और अगर वो आकर इनसे पूछेंगे क्या ये कहेंगे आप चले जाएँ या नहीं मेरे ख्याल में ज्ञान ये ऐसी रोशनी है जिस जो यहाँ तक सीमित नहीं है रोशनी जब सूरज उगता है तो उसकी रोशनी जानवर पे भी फैलती है और राजा पे भी फैलती है तो ये तो होगा डॉक्टर साहब यहाँ पर मेरा ये कहना है कि ये एलाइट के लिए ही नहीं है अभी हम एक मेडिकल कॉलेज खोलते हैं तो सबके लिए खोलते हैं उसमें आप कहेंगे कि नीचे के स्तर के लोग नहीं आ सकते 
उनको कैसे मदद करके स्कॉलरशिप दे के फिशन दे के भी मदद की जा सकती है लेकिन आपको मेडिकल कॉलेज खोलना पड़ेगा वैसे हमने ये कोशिश की है अभी इसमें हम कैसे बाकी के लोगों को मदद कर सकें वो भी हमारा उद्देश्य रहेगा ताकि यह नहीं कि खाली एलाइट लोगों को लेकिन आज एलाइट लोगों का प्रॉब्लम क्या था ऐसी ये फैसिलिटी इंडिया में नहीं थी जो हम देना चाहते हैं इतने टॉप क्लास की है वो हम देना चाहते तो यहाँ से शुरुआत होगी और बाकी सबको मिलेगा नो आई वॉज एंड सी दैट एग्जैक्टली एट कि यही परसेप्शन को तोड़ना है कि रिकवरी एक प्रिजेंट सेंटेंस जेल टर्म नहीं है हम डी एडिक्शन फैसिलिटीज को डिसकम्फर्ट डार्क डैंक प्लेसेस जो अपीलिंग नहीं है उसके साथ जोड़ते हैं मगर नहीं अगर आपने रिकग्नाइज किया है कि आपको एक प्रॉब्लम है और आप हेल्प चाहते हैं आधे लोग जो हैं हेल्प ही नहीं मांगते हैं और आपको पता है कि ऐसा एक जगह है जहां हम डिग्निटी के साथ में एक ऐसे माहौल में रिकवर हो सकते हैं जहां पे रिकवरी इज फन इज अ मल्टी प्रॉन्ग अटैक वे पीपल आर अप्रोचिंग द फिजिकल द मेंटल यू नो द होलिस्टिक देन आई थिंक लॉट मोर पीपल लोग रिकवरी और डी एडिक्शन से डरेंगे नहीं बात तो तो बात तो बहुत दूर से लग जाएगी कि हमें प्रॉब्लम एक प्रॉब्लम हो गया है सोसाइटी के वी एक्सेप्टेड सफरिंग एज आर नॉर्म इट्स नॉट वी आर नॉट वी एन वी नॉट अडिक्ट आर नॉट क्रिमिनल्स सो इट्स ओके नॉट टू गो टू अ ब्यूटीफुल प्लेस लाइक दिस कि आप एक अच्छे साफ सुथरे रूम में ब्यूटीफुल बाथरूम में वेदर स्विमिंग पूल दे योगा क्लास न्यूट्रिश फूड Why do we feel we don't deserve that? Why do we feel that addicts don't deserve that? Why jail? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have to send them to a dark cell? Why do we have को छोड़ा जहाँ नेवी के धुरुंदरों को हरा के आती हैं <laughs> <laughs> तो अब और आपने ये भी कहा कि जो आपको एज ए सोबर कबूल कर रहा है वो ही आपके दोस्त है अब इस जर्नी के लिए व्हाट्सएप को छोड़ के किसी और क्रेडिट देना चाहेंगे दीपक वाइन्स का जो लड़, जो जो लड़के ने फोन उठाया <laughs> और वो रैंडम स्ट्रेंजर जिसकी मतलब रोजी रोटी शराब बेचने हाँ, पे डिपेंडेंट है और जब भी उसने मुझे बोला कि पूजा जी आपका फोन आया मेरा दिल घबरा गया कि मैंने पढ़ा था कि आप अखबार में कि आपने शराब छोड़ दी और मेरा दिल घबरा गया तो मैंने बोला यार इसको तो उस कंसर्न होने की जरूरत क्या है जब मेरे खुद के लोग खुद के दोस्त चाहते थे कि यार पार्टी है पी लो एनिवर्सरी है पी लो तो आई थिंक के addiction alcoholism is a very selfish journey recovery has to be as selfish it has to be selfish agar koi bhi aisa shakhs hai chahe aapke maa baap lover pati bacche hain jo aapko kahin na kahin aapke core se steer karke wapas wahi pe le jayenge laat maar ke unko hata do aapki journey se you have to be if 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 addiction is selfish recovery has to be more selfish and i think humko ye cheek cheek ke bolna hai khas taur ko auraton ko कि ये मर्द की जागीर नहीं है मर्द को, मर्द को। आप ये शराबी बनी है डैडी बनी है मेल पर्सपेक्टिव से बनाइए फिल्म फीमेल पर्सपेक्टिव से फीमेल एल्कोहोलिज्म के बारे में बात करें आप एंड लाइक मार्टिन ने कहा कि कोविड की तरह एल्कोहोलिज्म एडिक्शन आपके बैंक बैलेंस को नहीं देखता है इट अफ्लिक्स अ वुमन सिटिंग इन केरला समबडी सिटिंग इन हाई राइज अपार्टमेंट समबडी वर्क एज मेड सर्वेंट सम so i think eventually wo aapko usi level pe le aata hai which is why when you go to an a class it's very humbling to see ke are yaar aap bhi aap bhi all walks of life are covered and you realize what binds you is your wretched humanness so i think it's important ke hum addiction ko ek to accept kare covid ke dauran domestic abuse jaise kehte hain ke wife beating without alcohol is like a circus without lions आप शराब को इक्वेशन से निकाल दें 90 परसेंट डोमेस्टिक अब्यूज के केसेस आपके कम हो जाएंगे एक्सीडेंट्स होते हैं शराब के इन्फ्लुएंस के अंडर अल्कोहल इज अ ड्रग द गवर्नमेंट विल नॉट एक्नोलेज दैट बिकॉज इट्स प्रॉफिटेबल टू दैट सो द पॉइंट इज दैट इफ यू हैव द कैपेसिटी टू बी एबल टू हैव अ ड्रिंक और टू एंड स्टॉप एंड इट डज नॉट मेस अप योर लाइफ एंड एवरीबडी अराउंड यू वंडरफुल बाई ऑल मीन्स मेरे अंदर वो चिप नहीं है बस बहुत सारे लोगों में चिप नहीं है तो यू हैव टू दैट मगर आधा बैटल तो वही है पहले अपने आप को कह दो यार कि मेरा प्रॉब्लम है फिर हेल्प मांगिए हेल्प इज अवेलेबल डोंट बी अशेम्ड तो ये स्टिग्मा हटा दें ये शेमिंग की जो आदत है हमारे हिंदुस्तानी की जो खासियत है कि आप क्यों गए आपने क्यों किया 
यूक्रेनियन स्टूडेंट्स को भी शेम कर दो अल्कोहलिक को भी शेम कर दो एक औरत जो मतलब शादी एक जब शादी टूटती है और वो खुद के बलबूते पे फिर से चल लेती है उसको भी शेम कर दो <laughs> तो आप डरा डराना बंद कर दो यार क्योंकि हम डरने नहीं वाले बहुत अहम बात पूजा ने कही है की ये दृष्टि जो है कहीं पर महिला के परस्पेक्टिव से भी हमको ये पूरे इशू को देखना चाहिए क्योंकि अक्सर हमको लगता है कि सारे प्रॉब्लम जो हैं ये सिर्फ मर्दों के हैं तो ये हमारी बहुत ही जो गरीब लोगों की जो अब जैसे हमारे कलोटे में आदिवासी विलेज है वहाँ की औरतें शराब पीती हैं और वो एडिक्स हैं तो उनकी भी तो एक दास्तान है कि ये जेंडर ये कि परवाह नहीं करता इसे कोविड होता है मर्द को भी होता है औरत को भी होता है तो ये जरूरी है कि एंटरटेनमेंट के स्पेस में अगर आप ये बात इस, इसको टैकल करना चाहें तो विदेश में हॉलीवुड ने किया था एक मेगराइन के फिल्म थी मेरे ख्याल में जहाँ पर वो एक फीमेल परस्पेक्टिव से तो ये सही बात कही नहीं तो ये बात हम टैकल करते नहीं क्योंकि पहले तो बात माननी पड़ती है कि हाँ साहब ये बा, बात एग्जिस्ट करती है हाँ, अपने आप को बात मानोगे तो फिर उसको कहीं पर जरूरत करके कहानी मुतारोगे और फिर दस लोग आ, आके रोकेंगे क्या घर की बात जाके बाहर कह रहे हो तो हमारी तो पूरी जिंदगी यही है कि तू घर की अपनी बात जाके बाहर क्यों बोलते भैया हम अपनी बात भी बोलेंगे कि उसकी बात बोलेंगे और ये फैलसी है कि सिर्फ फिल्म इंडस्ट्री में लोग शराब पीते हैं और सबसे अब्यूज करते हैं क्योंकि आज के दौर में लोग इतने पैरानोइड है अपने लुक्स को लेके the lead of our healthier lifestyle but go into a life just go into life and chale ho gaya mere khayal mein ha chale thank you thank you and i need to run to the restroom if not my yes, bladder is burst yeah this is right